Shabbat Shalom, everybody, and thank you for joining us today on this beautiful Shabbat. Today is the 20th of August, 2022, year 5782. Today is the Parasha Aikev, and which means because. And we're going to be talking about turning to the source of our blessing. The Torah portion comes from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 12, through chapter 11, verse 25. The Haftarah, or the prophetic portion, comes from Isaiah chapter 49, verse 14, through chapter 51, verse 3. <clears throat> and the Brit Hadashah, or the New Testament, or New Covenant, strangely enough, is a little short this week, it comes from John chapter 13, verse 31, through chapter 15, verse 27, James chapter 5, verses 7 through 11, and Romans chapter 8, verses 31 through 39. <clears throat> so, my name is... Rabbi Clint Harel Fry, and I want to thank you for joining us today. And before we start, I just want to open this time in prayer. So, Abba Father, thank you for the opportunity and the privilege it is to be in your presence and to study your word and to <clears throat> dig deeper what it means to be uh, your children. I ask that you simply guide me and that everything that comes out of my mouth will be from you, from your Ruach HaKodesh, for your glory. In the name of Yeshua, Amen. So we'll open up with the first two verses of Deuteronomy 7, verses 12 and 13. Because, or I kev, you listen to these rules and keep and do them, the Lord your God will keep with you the covenant and the steadfast love that is for to your fathers. He will love you, bless you, and multiply you. So last week in Parashah by Hanan, uh, if you remember, Moses predicted that the people in future generations would be exiled from the promised land and scattered amongst the nations because they would turn from Hashem and worship idols, etc., etc. So Moses also foresaw that in the last days they would once again seek him and obey his commandments. So we're about to see that coming soon. <clears throat> the title of this week's Parashah Ikev, like I said, means because is used in this parasha as a conjunction to create a relationship between experiencing Hashem's blessings and obedience to his, his uh, Torah. And in connection with this, the Haftarah portion this week contains a very important prophecy that provides us with added insight into how to walk into the blessings or in the blessings of Adonai through faith and obedience. <clears throat> so these three, faith, obedience, and blessings, are seen operating in our forefather Abraham, who first believed and then out of faith obeyed Hashem and was circumcised. Okay? And not only that, he went down to the land where Hashem told him to go. Like, I don't know where I'm going to go, but I'm going where you told me to go. So Abraham exemplified the concept that obedience is more than exercising our will over our own flesh. It's faith in action. <clears throat> okay? So... There have been times in my life where I've been desperately afraid of what Hashem told me to do. I'm like, okay, I don't know how you're going to work this out, but I'm going to step forward and do what you told me to do. You're going to work out the rest. And it worked out great. So <clears throat> out of his faith flowed obedience to Hashem. Okay. It's not from obedience comes faith. The work, the two go together, but faith leads to obedience. In Genesis 15, 6, we can see that his faith was counted to him as righteousness. All right. And the ancient Hebrew prophet Yeshayahu, or Isaiah, begs us to look to Abraham, our father of faith. We are to be like him, <clears throat> putting faith into action. Then we too will experience the blessings that come from obedience. Okay. So listen to me, you pursuers of justice. You who seek Adonai, consider the rock from which you were cut, the quarry from which you were dug. Consider Abraham your father and Sarah who gave birth to you. Isaiah chapter 15 or 51 verses 1 and 2. So now we're talking about the heel of the Messiah. So the word akev comes from the verb akav. Okay, it's a verb. The akav is the verb and means to take by the heel. All right, if you have faith in something, you're going to grab it by the heel, right? So similarly, 
the Hebrew noun akev means heel. So akav means take by the heel. The noun akev means heel. Akev, okay, means because. Pretty interesting. So as in the heel of a foot. So all these words share the root letters ayin, kof, and vet. Ancient Jewish sages interpreted this kind of dual meaning of ayin, kof, and vet to refer to the generation of the heels of Mashiach or Messiah. The last generation of the exile is called ikvata de Mishicha. So it means on the heels of Messiah. Since that generation is expected to hear the footsteps of the Messiah. And that is the generation we are in now. So the word akev is first used in Genesis as an important prophecy. The seed of Chava or Eve will eventually crush the head of the serpent. <clears throat> and I will put enmity between you, the serpent, and the woman. And between your offspring and hers, he will crush your head and you will strike his heel, Akev. So that would be, as you can guess, Yeshua. Yes, Jesus. And this is found in Genesis 3.15. So this is the first Messianic prophecy in the whole Bible. From this, we understood, or we understand that the enemy would attempt to strike at the heel of the Messiah. And as we know, he tried to get him to fall to temptation. He got him to die on the, on the cross. Instead, however, <clears throat> our Messiah would crush the enemy's head and destroy the works of the devil by, like I said, dying on the cross, but shedding his blood for us and then coming back to light. So it says in 1 John 3, 8, the one who does what is sinful is of the devil. devil. Because the devil has been sinning from the beginning, the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. So what does it mean the correlation between faith and the promised land. So as we know today, we have lots of anti-Semitism coming back as if it ever went away, but it's getting worse. Many consider it factually or politically incorrect to refer to Israel as a land promised to the Jewish people. I have met a few of those people, unfortunately, sadly, in uh, different Arabic countries who who say just the opposite. If you say the word Israel at all, they get really angry and they say, uh, Palestine. So the word of Hashem, however, has no limitation. And uh, Hashem is the Lord of all the earth, as we know. But the land of Israel is unique among the nations. If you've ever been there, you'll understand that. <clears throat> it is not like any other nation on the earth. It is a land that Hashem cares for and watches over continuously. The land you are crossing over to take possession of is the land of hills and valleys which soaks up water when rain falls from the sky. It is a land Adonai, your God, cares for. The eyes of Adonai, your God, are always on it, from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. This is found in Deuteronomy chapter 11, verses 11 and 12. So in Parashat Ikev, Moses is continuing his closing address to the Israelites. He knows he's going to die soon. So he's continuing his address to them before they cross the Jordan River which he began at the beginning of the Deuteronomy. So here he is, he's going quite long. Maybe he's thinking, ah, the longer I talk, the longer it will be before I die. Mm -hmm. Who knows? But he wants to make sure he, he lets them know, hey, this is what you're called to do. This is what you're going to do. This is what's going to happen. I want to encourage you, et cetera, et cetera. All right? This is the mark of a true leader, somebody who wants to make sure that the people got what they need before they go to do what they got to do. He tells them that if they are obedient to the Torah, they will prosper in the land that they are about to conquer. All right, we should probably remember that even as believers, it's important to be obedient to Hashem and His Word. The people are about to possess the land and not fear the nations living there because Hashem would expel them. All right, unfortunately, that didn't happen that way. A few people got saved, got left alive, and we're seeing the fruits of that today. It says in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 16 through 22, you are to devour all the peoples that Adonai your God hands over to you. Nevertheless, you are not to be afraid of them. You are to remember well what Adonai your God did to Pharaoh and all of Egypt. You are not to be frightened of them because Adonai your God is there with you. A God great and fearsome, Adonai your God will expel those nations ahead of you little by little. 
So even today, Israel is not the fear of the people in the land, for our God is with us to help us, just as he helped us in ancient times in Egypt and in Israel. And <clears throat> so we have Hamas and other terrorist organizations uh, always attacking brutal battles, trying to take the land from the Jewish people. The soldiers, of course, in, of Israel risk their lives every day to restore the security of the land given to the Jewish people. You can see it all the time. They're constantly everywhere. Between them and the police, they're ready to take down anybody who tries to attack. I've seen this with my own eyes, and it's quite an incredible thing to see. And it's sad, unfortunately, that people still think they need to do this and attack the people instead of just accepting what needs to be accepted. So while Israel's enemies might greatly outnumber her, as we know, there are many nations around her, not just the, in Palestine or whatever you want to call it, but the word of Hashem promises that he will watch over her day and night. All right. It says, he who keeps Israel neither sleeps nor slumbers. Psalm 121, verse 4. So the plan to destroy Israel, as we know, is of the enemy. So anybody out there, even if people call themselves Christians or whatever you want to call them, and we're seeing a lot of this happening these days, who speak against Israel, well, they're just bringing curses upon themselves. All right, they're just <clears throat> putting themselves into hell with their own mouths. And that's not good. All right, all those who make themselves Hashem's enemies will find themselves under the feet of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. And we can find reference to this in Psalm 110, verse 1, and Hebrews 10, verse 13, just for a couple examples. It's all written all over the place, so go take a look. There are those who are not prepared to hear the biblical truth that Hashem has given the land of Israel to the Jewish people. But those who know their God, their, their father, will stand firmly upon the rock of Hashem's word. So what does it mean, as we said in the, in the title of today's uh, sermon, to turn to the source of the blessing? I raise my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come my help comes from Adonai, the maker of heaven and earth. Psalm 121, verses 1 and 2. So, it, for example, in Israel these days, the terrible struggle against, like I said, terrorism, has caused many of Hashem's people to turn their hearts toward Him as they search for help and victory. Not enough people are turning toward Him, but they will turn the worse it gets. Hopefully. Throughout the history of Israel, however, we see over and over again that Hashem blessed the Jewish people. Many soon forgot him as the source of their blessing and turned away from their devotion and obedience to Adonai. And this is still happening today. If you go to Israel, many people don't even care about God or even think he exists or don't care if he exists. I've heard people say, literally say, we don't need him. That's sad, but these people will be destroyed. All right, They will not take part in any of Hashem's um, uh, eternal life, unfortunately, and, and his inheritance. But those who do turn to him, they will see his glory. Hashem said of Gomer, for example, the unfaithful wife of the prophet Hosea, she doesn't know it was I who gave her the cream, the wine, and the oil, I who increased her silver and gold, which they used for Baal. This is found in Hosea 2, verse 8. So we, as uh, believers in Yeshua, we as Jews always need to remember that when we prosper in the land that he gives us, it is Hashem who is the source of our every blessing. All right. We should never let pride rise in our hearts and think that our own abilities are the source of all that we have and enjoy. You might have a great job. You might be bringing in good, lots of money. You might have lots of cars and a big house. Guess what? It's all from Hashem. And you can lose your job. You could lose your cars and your house and everything you have in a moment's notice without any warning whatsoever. We're seeing this happen all over the world, okay? People in California, different parts of the United States, losing their houses to fires, to huge fires, tornadoes, earthquakes, 
et cetera, et cetera, hurricanes. There's going to be a lot of this going on. So guess what? Don't put your faith in what you are doing. Oh, I've got a great job and I'm this, whatever. It doesn't matter. I have thousands and thousands of dollars in the bank. I'll be okay. Guess what? It's going to go. All right. It will be gone eventually. So what we need to do is put our eyes on the one who gives us the blessings. Now, if we understand that what we have has been given us by Hashem, we are more likely to maintain an attitude of gratitude and be good stewards using our blessings in a way that pleases Hashem. Okay, <clears throat> not just for yourself. Granted, it's okay to enjoy some of it, but we need to remember what it's really there for. It's there to bless others. All right, each of us today should consider Moses' warning to the people of Israel. You will think to yourself, my own power and the strength of my own hand have gotten me this wealth. No, you are to remember Adonai, your God, because it is he who is giving you the power to get wealth in order to confirm his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors, as is happening even today. You can find this in Deuteronomy 8, verses 17 and 18. So Hashem gives us the power to get wealth in order to confirm his covenant. And though it is obedience that releases the blessings of Hashem, he is not so much after our obedience as he is our hearts. Okay. You can be obedient and your heart can be whatever, not, not truly wanting him. You can be obedient and, and have our just says, I don't want to do this. He wants our hearts. True obedience begins with love for Hashem and faith in his character. So therefore, even more than the physical circumcision of covenant, which... You know, if you're circumcised, good. If not, okay. Uh, which is, it is important, uh, especially if you're a Jew. We, we still do that to this day. It sets us aside. Hashem desires, though, that each one of us be circumcised in our hearts. That's what's needed. We cannot change outwardly only. Putting on a show of religion, character, or purity. None of us is pure. I'm certainly not. The only purity I have is through the blood of Yeshua. We must change inwardly and become soft and pliable clay in the potter's hands. How can we do that? Through his word, through his help. He's the one who has to work in us. There's nothing we can do on our own. Nothing. Sure, we might make good changes for a little while, but guess what? It's not going to last. We'll always go back to the dirt. We'll always return to the vomit if we try to do it on our own. So it says in Deuteronomy 10, 16, circumcise the foreskin of your heart and don't be stiff-necked any longer. If Hashem is trying to speak to you, if he is trying to correct your ways, trying to change the way you think, all right, don't be stiff-necked. Say, you know what? Thank you for showing me this. Thank you for teaching me your ways. It's so important <clears throat> to just give in to his will and be pliable. Because if you're not, if you're not pliable, guess what can happen to old, crusty, dry clay that's not been formed in anything? It's going to go right out and be thrown on the ground and will be just become dust. That's what can happen if we are not going to be pliable and soft in the potter's hands. Hashem promises Israel that the rewards of love and obedience are great. He will drive the nations out of the promised land and give the Israelites success against those who are more powerful than they are. And we will see this soon. If we will love the Lord our God and cling to him and keep his mitzvot or commandments. And yes, they're still just as good today as they were back then. <clears throat> Yeshua showed us this. Okay. Then he will faithfully care for us and protect us. This is a wonderful assurance that we have of his love, but it is conditional. All right, it says, For if you will take care to obey all these commandments or mitzvot, I am giving you to do them, to love Adonai your God, to follow all his ways, and to cling to him. Then Adonai will expel all these nations ahead of you, and you will dispossess nations bigger and stronger than you are. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verses 22 and 23. All right, so. Instead of trying to say, 
we don't need these rules. We don't need the law anymore because this and this and this. No, you need to run back and say, okay, the law of Moses, the Torah, the Ten Commandments cannot save me. Following each and every one of them will not save you. However, they will bring, bless, bring blessing if you do it with the true heart. They will be bless, bring blessing to your life. And this is a true thing. I can tell you because I have seen it in my life. Honoring the Sabbath, which is Saturday, as a day of rest. I'm not talking about a day when people go to their congregations to meet. That can be done any day of the week. I'm talking about day of rest. You set it aside and be with the Lord. That's what you do. Right? Following God's instructions, Hashem's instructions. Hey, do this, do that, do this a certain way. If you find something that's been lost, do this. If if somebody has been hurt, do this and this. Whatever. The instructions, the Torah were given to us because they are Hashem's way. He did not want us to go our way. He wants us to follow His way. And the biggest thing we can do is follow Yeshua HaMashiach, who is the Torah of in the flesh. And if you want to accept Yeshua as your Moshiach today, as your Savior, I beg you, I invite you to say this prayer with me out of your heart, believing truly that He is Moshiach, Messiah. And it is coming back soon. As it says in the Bible, I am the way, the truth, and life. No one can come to the Father except through me. He who believes in me will be saved. So I invite you to say this prayer with me now. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Natan Lanu Et Terech HaYeshua B'Meshiach Yeshua Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has given us the way of salvation, Messiah, Yeshua. If you are a Jew and you are still fighting with <clears throat> Yeshua being Moshiach, it's okay. Ask. Ask him, even. Are you real? Is it true? He will answer you. If you want, you can contact us. There's a contact link below. We will send you a free book. You can read for yourself. If you don't want to, you can read Isaiah 53. It's talking about him. It's not talking about the people of Israel, not talking about anybody else but Yeshua. Okay. And I say this because the time is short before he comes back and it'll be too late. It'll be too late. So if you need prayer for anything, please contact us. We'd love to pray for you. If you'd like to dedicate it, uh, parasha in the future to a special event in your life or to somebody <clears throat> we would like you to do that we have a link below for that we have a free resource link for all of our free resources if you'd like to uh, receive counseling based on biblical uh, principles that i beat gabriela has a website below called Mahese Sheltipa, and which means the shelter of hope and it's in english and in italian so you can check that out it's beautiful and she is a licensed counselor <clears throat> And also, if you'd like to help support our ministry in any way, uh, we could really use your help because we are doing everything we can to bring the, bring the message of salvation to our people. And we thank you so much for joining us today. May you be blessed. And I want to close this time with a blessing. <laughs> Meishmerecha Yair Adonai Panavelecha Vihuneka Yes Adonai Panavelecha Vesehim Lecha Vesehim Lecha Shalom Vesehim Yeshua Hamashiach Saha Shalom Shalom May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of Yeshua the Messiah, the Prince of Peace, Shalom. And Shabbat Shalom to all of you.